This month on Maker Update, a ghost drops some candy, Matrix in a box, Fusion 360's monster, sorting garbage, M2 connection, and giving your pie a voice. Hello and welcome back to the Adafruit edition of Maker Update for November 2020. I'm Tyler Weingartner and you may have noticed that this show is releasing a little bit early this month. We didn't want to interfere with election day since that's when this show would normally come out. I hope we're not messing with your Sunday schedule too much, but we've got an awesome show lined up for you and kind of a long one. So let's check out the project of the month. In the past few weeks, I've seen all manner of socially distanced candy delivery systems for trick-or-treaters, but I really appreciate what the Ruiz brothers have done here to keep things simple, but make it fun too. After finding this flying ghost at their local Halloween store, they added a mechanical gripper so it could help deliver bags of candy to distant trick-or-treaters. The Circuit Playground Blue Fruit means that the gripper can be controlled remotely from a smartphone running the Blue Fruit app. The gripper, servo mount, and enclosure are all 3D printed, and you can find the STL files by checking out the show notes down in the description. The ghost moves along a rope, and when it's over a bucket, or anywhere else you want to drop the candy payload, you just open the claw. It looks like you won't have direct control over the ghost, but it seems like it moves slowly enough that you should be able to accurately deliver candy. Now I know that this project would have been a lot more useful to know about maybe a week ago, but it's like I always say, it's never too early to start thinking about next Halloween. And we'll probably need to be staying socially distant for a while now. And I think it's fair to say that after everything we've been through this year, we deserve a second Halloween. Or maybe you can hack this into a socially distanced gravy delivery system for Thanksgiving. Now for the news. Hopefully by now you've already been able to cast your vote, either through early voting or vote by mail. If you haven't, Make sure to get out there on Tuesday and get your vote out. If you need to double check where your polling place is or where you can drop off your vote by mail ballot, go to vote.org for all the details. And once you have voted, there's a number of projects you can build to remind others to get their vote out too. Alpen Glow Yarn is selling these I Voted Solder badges and Colin Cunningham shared his I Voted pin last month. They're a fun way to celebrate the democratic process. Adabox 16 should already be out in subscribers' hands, and there's an unboxing video on Adafruit's YouTube channel. Inside the box, there's an Adafruit Matrix portal, a 32x64 RGB LED Hub 75 matrix, and a nice big piece of black LED acrylic for diffusion. There's also plenty of accessories like some hardware, a power supply, plus a cloth face mask and an ear saver. That's what's in the box, but make sure to check out the video just to see John Park hamming it up as Riff Raff from the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And if you missed it, you can watch Lady Ada's keynote from Empire State Maker Fair on the Maker Fair YouTube channel. Most of it is a timeline of Adafruit's path as a company through 2020. I don't know about you, but I can barely remember what happened back in August, so it's pretty wild to remember all the things that happened this year. Plus, there's some great advice about how you can still be helpful, even when you're way outside your area of expertise. Back to more projects. By now, you may be used to working from home, but your productivity habits may have slipped. Katni Rambor built this activity timer and hydration reminder with a cutie pie and a pair of NeoPixel rings. Flip it over and it counts down through a set interval and then flashes to let you know that it's ready for the next interval. It's perfect for Pomodoro timers or any other regular timing you'd like to track or be reminded of. I also love the minimal design of this project. Like a circuit sculpture, the solid cord wire provides all the structure needed to suspend the cutie pie and the accelerometer between the two NeoPixel rings. You don't normally think of Fusion 360 as the tool for modeling 3D characters, but when it's the tool you got, it's the tool you use. Liz Clark built this simple, chunky head of Frankenstein's monster, and her video walks you through how she designed it in software that wasn't designed for this. There's some NeoPixels that light up the eyes and the mouth, and they change color when you touch the capacitive copper tape on the neck bolts. It's a fun build. If you want to go bigger with your voter pride, Aaron St. Blaine shows you how to make this RGB LED matrix portable by fitting it into the panel of a backpack. Some E6000 glue holds a piece of clear vinyl in place to protect it from the elements, and the matrix portal makes it easy to code and design for. 
Rounding out our collection of Cutie Pie projects is this color mixing bracelet by Deborah Ansel. On the surface, it seems deceptively simple, but there's a ton of really interesting design techniques used in this build, like using the USB-C battery connector as the clasp for the bracelet, or using edge-lit neopixels to mix and blend opposing colors that are diffused through gems made of hot glue blobs. There's a ton of great ideas here. Check it out! From the Adafruit community, Jen Fox built this Raspberry Pi trash identifier to help her figure out which bin a particular piece of trash goes into. At work behind the scenes here is Lobe, a machine learning tool that uses images to train the model. She took a ton of pictures of different kinds of trash and then categorized them as to where they should go. This could be really helpful in public spaces where people might not understand how trash gets categorized. Or you can adapt Lobe to any number of other projects. And it might have a hidden benefit as a self-affirmation tool, since it can take a picture of your face and remind you that you're not trash. Check out the full build notes down in the description. Time for some tips and tools. You may already be familiar with M2 connectors if you've installed an NVMe drive into your computer or laptop. But the connector standard is becoming more popular for embedded hardware with modules from folks like SparkFun, Particle.io, and a few others. Lady Ada has a video demystifying these connectors and their different standards, and has some helpful tips for finding the right one through DigiKey search tool. M keying, E keying, it's all here. For any Raspberry Pi projects you'd like to make sound reactive, check out the voice bonnet from Adafruit. This will work with any Pi that has the 2x20 GPIO connector and will add two microphones and a 1 watt speaker output. There's also three dot star LEDs, a button, a Stemma QT connector, and plenty more. Katni Rabor just published a full guide for it. If you've ever stared at your Kindle screen and wondered why on earth it refreshes the way that it does, Check out this video from Adafruit. It explains what's going on in the display when the image refreshes, and more importantly, why. If you're looking to start using e-ink displays for your projects, or you just want to understand them a little better, give this one a look. The Adafruit Cutie Pie is a tiny powerhouse for wearable projects, especially anything involving NeoPixels. If you don't know where to begin, check out this guide by Katni Rambor. It'll help you quickly get started with light up projects for embedded wearables. You can use all the basic NeoPixel libraries, but if you want to use the more advanced animations, you'll need to solder on the 2 megabyte SPI flash module for additional storage. For this month's Adafruit product spotlight, the Matrix Portal is finally back in stock. The Matrix Portal is a SAMD51 Cortex M4 processor with an ESP32 Wi-Fi coprocessor and a built-in accelerometer. But the best part is it includes a 2x10 socket connector for solderless plug-and-play interfacing with any of the Hub75 matrices sold by Adafruit. It doesn't include the panel itself or the power supply to drive it, but it includes everything else you need to make it easy to drive these big, colorful matrices. Get yours in the Adafruit store. All right, and that is going to do it for this month's show. I hope the next time I see you, we're living in a less confusing and more optimistic world. That's just a hope, though. One more time for good measure. Go vote if you haven't already. As always, huge thanks to everyone at Adafruit for making this show possible and to you for watching it. Take care out there, and I'll see you in December.